I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's Aaron with Bear Proof Outdoors. We're out here, the sun isn't even up yet, we're all set up. We got the air shotgun, and we built some turkey calls. We're gonna get our own turkey, catch and cook turkey with our homemade turkey calls, mouth calls, with the air shotgun, and uh, yeah, so. Before we, you got one back there. We got one right there already? All right, before we call them in, let's get back to yesterday. I'll show you how we made these turkey calls, and then we'll catch and cook that turkey for you. Oh, wow, that tastes so good. This is my baby! We got lunch. I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Fowler's Makery of Mischief. All right, we're back at the shop, so we don't have to whisper. Turkeys can't hear us from here. This is the day before. And uh, Aaron had came up with this idea a little while back. Hey, let's make some turkey calls. So we got to make some good calls so Aaron can call them right into my lap because the closer, the smaller the pattern for this uh, air rifle. And we want to do a good, clean catch and cook. So basically, with the uh, start of a mouth call, most important thing is getting your, your distance on your bottom read and your top read set right. Pin that on both sides. And we'll grab a frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to bend this frame right on that edge. So the distance from how far that reed sets from the very front of the frame to the very back of the frame means a whole lot. If it's further back, it takes less air. And if it takes less air, it's gonna be a lot easier to play. We'll get that set right in that machined, grooved slot for it. And we'll set the reed. So we're gonna stretch it. We can stretch it to the thousandths with this gauge here. And we're just gonna pull that latex until it just starts to smile. Bend that tab, pop that free. We're gonna trim the cut. And on this one, we're gonna make a super sexy. And that one's gonna be just a little shorter on that side and you get a little bit bigger on that side. So then we'll tape that one. You just have to find your cut and your, and your tension. And you can cut right. that one. So it's all set and we cut it. That one will make noise. That one will make noise? That one will make well, noise. Well, I don't even know what to do. I don't know if it's it'll... It's been a little here, while. Here, I'll, I'll try it. You do that one, and then we'll make another we'll one, see, and I'll we'll try it. We'll see if it'll actually play something. That's all a poult can do when he's first born, or, or a hen. That's what mama hen does when she's trying to talk to the hens or to her flock and bring them back. And as I'm adding that rasp, I'm adding inflection. As I add inflection, I can I can change the pitch of the conversation from just being, you know, someone running a call to actually having emotion into what I'm saying. What do you think that hen's thinking? Is she happy or upset? Put that on your tongue and press that up into the roof of your mouth. That's the sound. Yep. That's your key key note right there that yep. you had. That's not bad. You're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a puppy that just got ran over. I was going to say, did you just step on your dog? <laughs> There's no dogs up here. <laughs> I 
feel like Dom, like Dom, back. <laughs> we got mine conditioned, and uh, we got to get back out there, and uh, we're gonna see if we can get ourselves a turkey with the air rifle. Let's do it. Let's do it. We just launched a new channel called Fowler Extra. Check it out. We did a longer video about the turkey calls and all the other ways to call in turkeys there. A tour of our new studios and an interview with the young man from Michigan who saved his sister from being abducted by defending her with his slingshot. Did you watch my How to Shoot a Slingshot video? Yes. Yes. No way. Oh my goodness. All to be found on our new channel, Fowler Extra. Today's video is brought to you by mud water, and I don't mean the muddy banks of the Mississippi water. Don't drink that. Pardon me? I ordered a thing of mud water over a year and a half ago, and I've been drinking it ever since, and I thought, we're doing this catch and cook turkey wrapped in mud. Why not see if mud water wants to sponsor this fun video? I reached out to them, and they sent me a special package, and they sent me one of their starter kits that you get when you order mud water and subscribe. You get one of these each month in the mail. You got, uh, there's some samples here. And it comes with a little booklet and a nice double whisk. Let's make some uh, mud waters. It has this really rich aroma that's uh, almost a, a boldness, just like you would expect from a coffee, a chai latte. We're gonna try out their new palm sugar and the coconut milk uh, MCT oil there. Seems silly, but I like the little bag on it. It tears without effort. Some sweetener. Give it a stir. Mmm. Mm. That's delicious. So it's a lot about unboxing it, why I've been drinking it, why I want to be healthy. But what is mud water? Mud water is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs with a fraction of the caffeine of a cup of coffee. You get the energy and focus without the crash or anxiety. It's made with cacao, lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, reishi, cinnamon, turmeric, and Himalayan salt. The lion's mane, we've been eating a lot of that in our stir fries and stuff. We love it from uh, the mushroom place up the road. I mean, that's supposed to be a good one for your mind. It gives you that true energy, an energy that uh, takes you through the day, but when it comes time to go to bed, it doesn't leave you sitting there going, I just want to go to sleep, you know? So check out the link in the description below for mud water. Use the promo code FOWLER and get 15% off your purchase and get your first taste of mud water today. Now let's get on with the rest of our adventure. All right, you might have recognized this from our um, catch and cook uh, grouse or pheasant, whatever it was that we did up north here in Maine. Uh, this is the Seneca double shot. So it's a shotgun, but air shotgun. Two barrels, there's a little switcher here for your right barrel and your left barrel. I brought it out with us to do the goose hunt with Aaron last fall. In the end, I just used my shotgun. Now, the rounds I made for that day are these ones here. As you can see, there's not a lot to it. Compared to a regular shotgun shell, which is, you know, way bigger, 12 gauge. The ones that come with it for uh, pheasant and stuff like that are tiny loads. They have a lot more into them. You can see a big difference between this and this. What we're gonna do now to try to increase our odds and how much we can fit in there is we have these, these are tungsten, these are nine. So you can use tungsten number nine for that and that should double the amount of shot. And you see that white stuff that's in with it? That's a silica and that helps so that the round holds together as it comes out the barrel. So lead, these are sixes and there's like 30 some odd shots in there and you can see with the tungsten number nines, there's probably a hundred and some odd, 160. With a regular shotgun, the rounds are propelled by explosive propellant. This is propelled by air. So these soft plastic shells that you see here, when they come to the end of the barrel, there's a choke on here and it pinches it a little bit. It's a little tighter at the end. It smashes through that. So with the tungsten rounds having a lot more of these and that silica as a shot buffer 
holding the rounds together and getting a tighter grouping. If all goes well, we'll see a good tight pattern and we'll feel safe enough to go and harvest our game. All right, we came down to the lake and uh, would you look at that? We had a giant flood and the water is up like three feet. It's crazy how this whole thing was all water the other day. A little wet, huh? And I had to rescue the kayaks. They were just, the rear ends of the kayaks are over there and they were just in the water. I was like, whew, that was, scared me. I thought for a second we were losing them. But we're gonna set up a target. <laughs> it's the worst looking turkey. All right, that's our bullseye. One, two, three, four, five. So, 10 yards. 20 yards. If you want to practice your shot like you'd take your, your shot while hunting, what you want to do is you pick a tree like this that's, that's as wide as your shoulders or wider and set yourself up on that tree and keep your knees up. And when you have that gun, all your weight of the gun is resting on this hand. That way you're not actually holding that gun. And you let that bird get all the way to right where you want him and then you just pick that gun up that much. That little bit of movement is going to be enough to make that bird pause, pick his head up and look at you. When he stretches that neck out, that's when you want to put that shot on him. Got a decent amount of air in it. We'll run it at that for now and then refill it to that same amount. Tungsten in one side and we got some lead in the other side so we can see the pattern difference just to start with. <laughs> a jump. <laughs> you jumped? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go check that out. Almost bullseyed him. He did. Yeah, but look at what I, yeah. We got three in the bird. One that skimmed him. One that went in, maybe broke his spinal cord, and that one probably finished him off too. Let's see what the nine. That was do. a lucky first shot. So I'm just gonna put a little black dot on each of these, just because there's not that many. 20, 21 out of like 38 that end up anywhere near this, and only one, two, three, four, five, those, six, se seven that the, end up in this eight-inch circle. Those bottom two would have helped. Yeah, they would. That yeah. centered one, that yeah. that might have done it too. You huh? had three. That's the one nice thing about that pattern. You got three that are right up and down that <laughs> spinal cord. Yeah, but that's got to be luck. It that's is. That's so ridiculous. All Let's right. see what the nines do. So let's see what the tungsten. All right. Here we go. Boom, turkey comes along. Hey, turkey, turkey. Sticks his head up at me. Boom. Holy cow, huh? So what we're seeing here, everything's low. There's one two, three up here. And well, that's that's something that we know about tungsten super steel anyway, is that it, it drops. drops, it's heavy. We want to adjust about six inches higher. Let's try that. And go about Let's two inches that. right. Well, oh, yeah. I don't know, it's still pretty darn spread you out. Of, you got a lot of head shot. Yeah, there. but that's like on the side of the head, the side of the head, the tip of the head, I mean. It's that drop. We should do one more piece of cardboard, but let's check our book. There's the lead. And they're falling out of the book. So on the tree, when they went through the cardboard, this is them sticking into the tree, the tungsten. Yeah. Um, I don't see any of the lead. Now here's through the cardboard and then in the book. Let's see how many pages we got. The lead, the lead did damage this far in, but it was, I don't know, not too many pages in, like an eighth of an inch. Tungsten, still showing damage. Deep, deep damage all the way down to there's still some of these. Well, that one went right through. That's pretty tough. A quarter, maybe an eighth of an inch of paper like that, plus the cardboard. I would say that that's more than sufficient for the turkey. And I think we're ready. Let's go uh, get some rest. Head out in the morning, harvest our bird.
Look, 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 look. Yeah. Yes! Two! Yes. A double! That's with, a double! With, with the air shotgun! With the one air shot. shotgun! One shot! Dropped him like a like, stone! Just like dead! Yeah, buddy! Yeah! yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I had I was holding in a cough. <laughs> I had like a throat tickle, the worst throat tickle. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you crunched that neck, buddy. Look at that long beard. Yeah. He's got a nice eight inch beard. All right. Nice three quarter inch spurs. Whew. He's about 18, 20 pounds. That's a nice one. That is a nice bird, buddy. Oh, yeah, man. look at that beautiful tail. I got the first one. Uh, you probably see it on the thing. I shot at the second one, and uh, I don't know where I was when I shot, honestly. I was like, I was like trying to spin the thing, and then I realized I needed to cock it. I was like, ah, oh. and then I shot, but it didn't seem like it did anything. So he flew up and away. He landed over here and Aaron swung around with the 410 and you popped him. And so, yeah, we got two. Each of us got one. Whew, my heart is beating. Oh, that's a good feeling. Set out a plan, made a turkey call, Aaron squawked, they came. Boom, he jumps right on top of the decoy, just. You know, the hardest part about all this is, yeah, okay, you can do all this and get a turkey to come in and shoot one, which is hard to begin with, but then I, I'm managing to reach up, spin the camera around, line everything up, shoot it with the air rifle at, what was that? That was at the 10 yard decoy, 10 yard decoy and nail it. That was so awesome. That was like exactly what we set out to do. All right, let's go cook ourselves up a turkey. All right, we're gonna check our bird. Weigh it up. 18.1. Just for the fun of it, we're gonna see what our turkey scores on the National Turkey Federation site. You're gonna measure your spurs, three quarters on that one, and then the beard, just eight inches. 49.62. There we go, and Aaron, what you were saying, 50s? 50 is good, 55 is excellent, but I think that was pretty excellent with the air rifle. Aaron's ability to get a turkey in at 10 yards and so cleanly, they were just all about it. They didn't pay any attention to what we were doing and we were able to harvest him. And now we gotta process him up and we can cook him up.
We got a turkey, we got some fire, and we got some mud. This is something I've kind of wanted to do for a while. I read about it in an old book and uh, and then I was kind of reminded of it when I saw the Wooded Beardsman doing that and he, uh, he just slathered his chicken and ate it all primitive like in the mud, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There is some grit in there. But we want to do it a little bit classier. We like to do things a little classy sometimes. And we got some wadobo. We got some maple wadobo. And then we got some more wadobo. <laughs> Aluminum foil. And some cook bags. Butter. And some wire. And a lot of mud. Now, we gotta figure out how to get this turkey all covered in wadobo and butter before we put it in the mud. A piece of this. Whoa, that is really sunny. Um, she's about uh, 12 pounds all dressed out now. So I had actually looked up how, uh, how to do a turkey just to see if anything, learn something new. I like to do that every time, even if there's something I've already done. Mainly the reason I looked this one up and wanted to see what uh, deer meat for dinner or other people did is I wanted to keep the tail fan for the feathers uh, intact and good and solid so that I could use those on a decoy for another turkey hunt. It gives that more realistic effect. So we will get it covered in some maple adobo. I think I'm just gonna open the bottles and just go right to it because we want a lot on there. This thing, we're not gonna get a second chance to season this. And then straight wadobo. Oh yeah. Since it's in the mud and the cook bags, I'm not sure the butter's gonna stay in any one spot all that well. Cut the skin a little and slip a pad in underneath the skin here and there. Let's see how that does. Oh yeah, that might be a good idea. So that's what I'm gonna do. Cram some butter down its throat. There we go. And into the bag it goes. Okay, oh, and I almost forgot about this. I wanna put a little liquid in there, get it going. I got some apple cider vinegar. So we got a little of this uh, miso broth. And, um, ooh, it's very salty. And I had forgotten about this. I wanted to add some of this too. Take and just butter them up with just a little bit of this here and there. All right, here we go. I'll add that, I'll wire it shut. I'm gonna, foil. I'm gonna put some foil around it as a sacrificial to protect it from impact and stuff. There. Last layer before the mud. I was concerned that the mud wouldn't stick to the foil. So I had the idea of like this old duck cloth that I picked up to make like a slingshot shooting range or something out of. That seems like that's perfect. Let's mud it up. realizing all that mud is a problem to move. So we're gonna use, try to use some of this chicken wire. Let's see if this works. All right, yeah. see that didn't work at all. I lost all of it. Right, maybe wrap it in wire first. quickly becoming a very unwieldy beast. Mm -hmm. oh, it's an unwieldy beast. That's for sure. Holy moly. Whose idea was this? Stop complaining. It's only mud. Just want to make sure there's as much mud as possible. Because that good two inches of mud is going to be what protects it from getting overheated. Now it's covered in mud. All right. She's ready to go on the fire. I don't know how to get it there, though. I think I'm going to roll it onto the fire. If I don't throw my back out. Ugh. Ah. 
There. She's in. Nice and tight. I don't see any cracks. And now, uh, build some more fire over it. Moment of truth. It looks like it's still held together. Let's see if we can get our mud puppy out of there. <laughs> oh, it's like a giant rock now. <sighs> wow. All right, oh, there's some of the mud came off right there. That's our first reveal. The fabric itself, it's a little on the crunchy side. Chicken wire. Not getting any smells yet. Which means it's still all wrapped up pretty good, I think. Oh. Oop, I hear like a sizzle, like some, oh, juices are leaking out. I got juices escaping. Keep blowing it free. Feels hot as heck. I'm burning in my hand. Woo! That smells good. Oh, juice is coming out. Foil. The bag is still intact. Oh, the meat looks like it's pretty. Yeah, that's coming right apart. So we did it. Oop. Juices and all. Oh. All right, we got our Springsgiving turkey. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, butter. Smells delicious. All right, right here at the end. Woo! Ah, oh, heart relief. I was so worried that this was gonna turn out very, very badly, and it looks pretty darn decent. Come here, guys. Come here, have your Thanksgiving dinner. Who's right, sit, sit. Butter. Butter. Butter, butter. Here you go. Buster, Buster, right here. There's yours. Buster seems to like it. Yes. Lord, thank you for this food. And Aaron taking us out and getting us on a turkey right close like that. Um, 
Uh, just bless this food to our body in this spring's giving feast. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, we have spring turkey with the air shotgun. We got mushrooms because we weren't able to get, uh, we, Sarah and I looked yesterday a bunch, we didn't get any more else, but we did get fiddleheads mm. with butter. And then we have turkey jerky from Aaron, a trout lily salad, pea sprout microgreen salad from our little harvest from our house, and burdock roots because we cleaned out the garden beds the other day and there was all kinds of burdocks in there and so we got some burdock roots. And John pointed out because of uh, our sponsor for today's video, Mud Water. We cooked it in mud and uh, we had uh, mushrooms with lion's mane because of the lion's mane that's in the mud water, which is uh, good too for your brain. And uh, so yeah, we got a couple things shouting out our sponsor and then we're gonna have uh, mud water lattes uh, with our feast. So, and uh, also I wanna say thank you guys for all your hard work and uh, you all get a dollar raise. Those of you that work for me, that is. Uh, well, thank Sarah, you. I appreciate that. that. <laughs> and uh, so I will dish it out and let's uh, enjoy. Uh, I mean, <laughs> smelling that thing, it smelled really good. It smells yeah. good. It looks a little on the dry side. There we go. And over here, some dandelions, some gravy on that. And then get your salad from Sarah. You didn't smell, you didn't smell, you didn't smell. I didn't expect it to smell. we go. Down into that tenderloin meat. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Do you like it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not just putting on airs for the video. You know better. <laughs> the texture is a little weird. The mushroom texture, I'm not a fan of. Mm. But the taste, which is kind of what matters, is mm. really good. I felt that way about carrots when I was a kid. Like I, I hated carrots. Like yeah. I could, I like they made, I, they made me sit at the table and I would be like, I, they put butter on it and they're like, they're so good. What's wrong with you? I'd be like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's the juiciest <laughs> wild turkey I've ever eaten. Cheers, Cheers. mud water. Cheers. Mud water. Thank you, mud water. <laughs> that actually goes really well with this. Burdock root turned out really good. Mm -hmm. That was with so the maple syrup that we made earlier this year, and, mm. and butter. Mushroom sauce, really good. Did yeah. that turn out good? Very mm -hmm. good. I'm becoming an adult, I'm eating vegetables. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you did throw up. It was a pretty intuitive, easy process, yeah? It wasn't too difficult. No, it was uh, very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pain in the neck. I don't think I'll ever do that again. <laughs> Turkey with the air rifle was like, that was so insane. I didn't think it was possible, and then I've got happened. all next week open, so if yeah. any boys want to oh, try it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Mudwater. Check out that link in the description below for them, and we will see you guys in the next one. Fowler team, out. Oh, it's really got some spring to it. Oh, there you go. Fred Flintstone. Oh, wow. There's tendons that run. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> no, that dark meat on the backside's a little. It's got a little. Gaminess? Aroma to it. No. Of what? Yeah, the thigh you can mud? Start with. Plain, ordinary mud. That looks very dark and dry. <laughs> It's a wild turkey leg. The full body mud pack is one of our most popular treatments.